but that's just practical. On a deeper level, God made himself knowable. You made yourself knowable. So on the one hand, you can say, a human being can't know God. That's impossible. On the other hand, if God makes himself known, that's certainly possible. God can do that. Ignore the phone, I can't reach it. So, on the one hand, human beings can't understand God. That's true. Unless God makes himself known. And he can certainly do that. Where does God make himself known? In the Torah. In different parts of the Torah, God makes different aspects of himself knowable. So the commandments, for example, if you study all the commandments, all 613 of them, you know what God wants. You know what is precious to him. You know what he enjoys and you know what he hates. That's a pretty big chunk of information. If you get to know your husband's loves and hates, his tastes and his distastes, you, you pretty much know a significant uh, section or a significant portion of who this person is. But then there are other parts of Torah that tell you other aspects of God. why he created the world, what is his purpose, what is his goal. So if we study all parts of Torah, we get to know pretty much every aspect of God. At the same time, we also know that we are understanding God on our level. It's what a human being is capable of knowing. God reveals himself to the fullest degree of human intelligence. So anything that we don't know about God is beyond our intelligence anyway, and it would be irrelevant to us. So both things are true. We will never know God on a, on a purely godly level, but we will know as much as human intelligence allows, which means we satisfy the mind completely. Anything that the mind can't know, it doesn't need to know and doesn't want to know. And that's where faith comes in. Emuna means I am comfortable with those parts of God that are not knowable. They're not knowable. It's not that God is keeping secrets. There are certain things about him that do not, do not apply to intelligence. So your mind is missing nothing. Your mind doesn't want to know what is unknowable, not interested. The mind wants to know everything it can know. And everything it can know, God made knowable about himself. Faith or, or emuna means where the mind cannot go, I have another relationship with God. The mind is not my only talent. I also have the talent called faith.
So let's stick to the Rambam. First mitzvah, which is the foundation of all foundations and uh, the pillar of all knowledge, is to know that there is an original existence from whose existence all other existence derives. The obvious question is, does that even need to be said? Is there anyone in the world who doesn't know that? What's the mitzvah? Like, like to say, the first mitzvah is be intelligent. Like, come on. We're intelligent. Teach us something. So to say, the first thing you need to know, as if you don't already know it, the first thing you need to know is that there was an original being and everything comes from the original being. Oh, come on. That should go without saying. What that original being is, that's fascinating. That's what every scientist would love to know. How did it begin? What's the original being? But to tell me I should know that there's an original being, <laughs> of course there is. That's like saying everything starts at the beginning. Oh, really? That's, that's profound. Everything starts at the beginning. So here's what Rambam is actually doing. Knowing that you believe in God. Otherwise, why would you be studying his commandments? So we begin, actually, with a belief in God. Now, when we say God, we mean an unknowable. Because what we understand, that what we can relate to, is existence that was created. We cannot imagine an original being. It didn't need to be created. Then where did it come from? Well, it didn't come from anywhere. It always was. Well, how did it get there? No, it didn't get there. It always was. What do you mean it always was? <laughs> we can't relate to that because that's not our experience. We, what, we did not always was. So when you say God always was, like, what? How can you always was? So Rambam is saying, because you believe in God, you probably assume that he is unknowable. That's why the first mitzvah, surprise, surprise, is that he is knowable. What is the first thing we know about him? Is that he exists in such a way. Listen to this. He exists in such a way that all else can gain and be a result of his existence. Try that again. First commandment is to know God. What do you know? That he exists. And from his existence, all other things get their existence. So what is he actually telling you? Not that God exists. It's how he exists. God exists in such a tangible fashion that from his existence, all other existence can evolve. So his existence is not detached from all else. The way that he exists allows for everything else to exist. Now that is surprising. 
because we would assume that if God exists, it's completely different from our existence and there can be no relationship between the two. In, in simplistic language, we are physical, material. God is spiritual. The physical cannot come from the spiritual. So what is Rambam saying? God is not spiritual. He's not spiritual. He exists in a way that eventually or, or inevitably makes other existence possible. His existence doesn't exclude your existence. Is this making sense or? So let's try it again. You have to know that there is an original being from whose true existence all other existence derives. Because if he doesn't exist, nothing else can exist. But when he does exist, it gives existence to everything else. So what is he telling us? Not just that God exists, but that his existence is real enough in our perception, tangible enough to actually produce physical existence. Which means he is not spiritual because the spiritual does not lead to the physical the next thing that Ambam says after he finishes the details of the existence of planets and of worlds and so on. He says, the next thing you need to know is that God communicates. He speaks to the prophets. Not only one time at Mount Sinai, but throughout all of history, God communicates. So the argument that the commandments were forgotten, we no longer know what God wants, can't be true because God is always communicating. So we will always know what he wants. You just have to identify the true prophet from the false prophet. But God will always make himself knowable. So from the belief in God's original existence, we get to the, not the belief, knowing God's original existence, the next thing we need to know is that he communicates. You could say the rest is commentary. Once you have these two pieces of information, well, it's smooth sailing after that. And I think that this is where most people have their difficulties. Very few people will argue that they can't keep Shabbos. The problem that most people have is Wait a minute, what, what do you mean Shabbos? Who, who said? Where is this coming from? Yeah, in the desert they had to keep Shabbos, but not, not today. Today you, you turn on the light just by flicking a switch. It's not, it's not labor. 
So it used to be, but no longer. This is, this is where most people have a problem. They have a problem with knowing God and being sure that he communicates. If you have those two things down, no further questions. Just point in the direction I should go and I'm going. Now, the Hasidus taps into the more romantic aspect of it. What does it mean? God's existence gives rise to the existence of all else. That, that's a philosophical or theological statement. Where's the romance? The romance is God didn't have to be that way. His existence didn't have to be so graphic that it can produce a physical universe. He could have remained distant, unknowable, but he chooses to make himself known. That is so romantic. God communicates. Sounds like a technical piece of information. How do I know what God wants? He communicates. Communication is personal. Communication means make yourself understood. Now, obviously, God could make people intuitively know what he wants, and then he doesn't have to communicate. We know God can be very efficient. So this doesn't seem like the efficient way of getting people to obey his commandments. Like, for example, in the Torah, in a number of occasions, people came to Moshe and said, what are we supposed to do? And Moshe said, wait here, I'll go ask God. That's not efficient. Why didn't God just make Moshe know everything? Why does he have to keep going back to God and communicate? By the same token, you can ask, why didn't God write down the entire Torah? Why leave a part of it oral, where there's a danger of, of misunderstanding or forgetting? Why not put it all in writing so that there will never be a mistake? Because that's so unromantic. It's like saying, here's what I need you to do. I'm giving you the list. It's all there. Don't call me. <laughs> We're never going to need to talk again. These are my instructions. Just follow the instructions. God says, no, 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 no. I'm not telling you everything. When a question comes up, call me. We'll communicate. That's so romantic. So it gives us a little bit of an appreciation of all the Torah writings, of all the holy books. Why did the Rebbe pick Rambam to be a daily study? This explains it a little bit. The Rambam is so Chabad. The 
It's just that back in the days of the Rambam, the, um, the romantic part was not, was not meant to be revealed. It was like God waited for us to grow into 